Welcome back. It's uh, just past the qu just quarter past the top of the hour, high noon Eastern here in New York. Coming to you live on Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV every day from the Question Tequila Studios right here in Midtown Manhattan. And uh, as we speak, the market is still holding some of its gains from this morning. And uh, right around, uh, as we speak, 26850 I'd like to see a punch through that nine and maybe close above 27000 for some good news out of the Fed. This thing will take off next week. And uh, Bitcoin down just a few hundred bucks, but uh, holding steady in that 12000 range. And uh, steady the ship we will um, when we bring in uh, a great guest like Tom Keogh from uh, Kingsbridge Strategies. Tom, thanks for joining us on, on Liquid thanks Lunch today, me. of course. Um, and, uh, you know, on Liquid Lunch, we try to cover all things, markets, politics, cryptocurrency, the new economy. And uh, me and Frankie kind of get accused of being too Trumpian. Um, but uh, the one thing going into the 2020 election, the one thing that I think it's all about, you could remove all this bluster with 20 Democratic candidates and socialism and all this stuff. To me, it always comes down to the economy, stupid. Um, and what are you guys over at Kingsbridge? What are you seeing with Trump's economy? Well, look, there's no secret the economy is the, we have a swinging economy and some of the criticism from the 20 plus Dems in the in the parade right now as well as it's not trickling down to the working man. But unemployment is at record low levels. Employment is manufacturing starts are very strong. Interest rates are at an all time low. And it sounds like with Pat, what Powell is saying, they may lower them even a little bit more. Um, minorities are working at record rates. Um, yesterday, the head of the Black Entertainment Network uh, came out endorsing Trump. He's saying, you know, you can say what you want. This man's done more for the economy of all races in the United States than anyone before. So, like you said before, John, it's the economy, stupid. And if you're not too sure what it is, it's the economy. There was uh, a time when Barack Obama was saying that uh Oh, Donald Trump says we're going to get back to what three percent growth, GDP growth. He's going to need a magic wand for that. Well, he must have found the magic wand well, because look, we're Obama above three, or at I think three point one percent, the lowest uh, African American unemployment in history, uh, lowest unemployment numbers overall in like fifty years. Um, also, wages were up. We saw the house, the uh, employment numbers were great last Fabulous. week. Uh, why can't they ever give the guy credit? Well, because you have a group as. No secret, Trump catapulted into the White House. You know, nobody gave him any credit. He was part of the 20 or 18 or 20 plus Republican candidates, you know, for this presidency that he now has. And no one gave him any credit that he was going to get there. And one by one, they kept dropping out and he kept gaining gaining voter uh, recognition. And a lot of people didn't even know who he was other than that he was a hotel owner. But look, we've never had a man of his stature a businessman could be a woman, but a business person in the White House that has no ties to the party machinery. He, I mean, look, he considers himself somewhat of a moderate, but he could be a Democrat too. I mean, he doesn't, nobody owns this man. And that's also part of the reason why he's so severely criticized because he kind of goes his own way. And no, I, I couldn't agree with more uh, and more with everything you said on the on the political front. Just to take advantage uh, one more time of your economic expertise. Um, apparently, when the Federal Reserve was meeting here in Manhattan recently, there were 33 percent of the I don't know if it's the Federal Reserve governors or the economists that the Fed relies upon to make decisions who said that they're predicting a recession within the next year to two years. That's the highest level in 12 years that have been predicting a recession. Well, look, we, we, How do you see it? I don't see that we're going to have a recession. I think we could have a cooling off. China's cooling off a little bit. Europe right, with Brexit is, they don't know what, you know, I don't know what they, they don't know what they're doing right now. So I don't think you have to be a great progress, prognosticator or forecaster to say maybe the economy is going to cool off a little bit. But I don't see us having a recession. We've never had such robust numbers. John was talking about the stock market before. Um, look, people are working. People are happy. You know, they're, they're, so the stock market's up. Wage growth is up. Job numbers are up. And, and unemployment is down. Unemployment and is minority down. minority work, people working are at all-time record so highs. All this, almost every number is pointing in a positive direction. Does that in some ways weaken the case for the Federal Reserve to be cutting interest rates right now? Well, look, the Fed is an unusual organization. You know, we appoint this. Jerome Powell was appointed by the president. And he's been under a lot of pressure by President Trump right now. 
because he feels that without doing something, our dollar is getting too strong and it's affecting us in, in global trade. So maybe the Fed's going to cool it off a little bit. But that also plays into what the president is trying to do with trade. And this is uh, the president's very pro trade. And most people, when they hear trade, 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 they don't really understand it. But it's look, the world trades. We we and I'm a little older than you two guys. When growing up in the United States, we didn't export a whole lot of stuff. We didn't need to. We do now. Uh, Hopefully we'll start exporting some oil because I, I think we're, we're, I think we're, we're a we're, surplus we're producer. We're one of the net producers, we're net producers and uh, that continues to lessen and lessen our need to rely on any Absolutely. of these folks in the Middle East Absolutely. who all really deep down hate us. Um, <laughs> but uh, for too. some reason, Trump continues to give Saudi Arabia the benefit of the doubt, well, much to the chagrin of my managing editor. Uh, and I noticed yesterday that um, Saudi Arabia canceled a contract uh, with the U.S. to buy like 30 jets and they wound up buying them from Airbus. So maybe some of the Senate work is uh, is getting on the nerves well, of Saudi Arabia. Speaking of the foreign policy situation, uh, it's a fascinating situation what we're seeing going on in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong has sort of this uh, two systems, one government policy. Uh, they've been under the control of China for the last 20 years now. Prior to that, they'd had uh, they'd been a British protectorate. 100 years. Uh, but um, there was this very controversial bill that had to do with expatriating, um, you know, criminals from Hong Kong to mainland China. There was an uproar about that. Massive protests. Where are we with that now? And more importantly, how does this affect our relationship with China? Look, uh, you know, the uh, interestingly enough, the Chinese dollar, the Hong Kong dollar, is very strong, and they peg their currency to the U.S. dollar. So our dollar and the Hong Kong dollar. Have, they're very symbiotic, so to speak. The, uh, also, Hong Kong, every, if you've ever been to Hong Kong, every major bank in the world, you've got HSBC down on the corner here, every bank in the world has a major presence in Hong Kong. It's a global trading city. Every brokerage house in the world is prominently you know, there. If you go up to, uh, I forget which hotel it is, they have a bar, it's called, I even forget what the heck the name of the bar, it's the highest bar well, in the world. Why would you think we would go to the bar? <laughs> well, because I mean, you could be a, be a place to get a liquid money. I mean, but, uh, you but, wouldn't be thinking this has anything to do but, with it. But the, uh, you look down on the city of Hong Kong, it is the most congested real estate city in the world. So I don't think G knows what he's going to do. He can't send the troops in there like he did in Tiananmen Square and bust them up. Because the whole world, it's a, it's a global trading city. You can ship whatever you want into Hong Kong by boat or by air. There's no tax, no tariff. It's a free port. The world needs it. And the southern tier of China needs it. So Carrie Lam's in trouble. I think she's out. Xi doesn't know what he's going to do. I think they're going to let the thing kind of quiet down. But it's very, very critical. And the extradition bill is on hold as we stand I think that's dead. dead. But look, he may just leave it the way it is because they're happy. They, it's still a Chinese city, and boy, it's a cash cow for mainland China. And the last 30 seconds we have, we're going to be covering up next this uh, controversy over the U.K. ambassador resigning after these Trump uh, comments were leaked to the Daily Mail. Uh, where do you think we're headed in terms of our relationship with the U.K. under possibly a prime minister, Boris Johnson, with or without a hard Brexit? Well, look, we, you know, they're our biggest ally. I think we're their biggest ally, whether they stay in the EU or not. Uh, look, I'm a big, big, big fan of the president. I don't see what we or he gained by, you know, hitting Sir Kim on his way out the door. I think any time an ambassador of that stature makes untoward comments about the head of state where he's residing as the ambassador, they're done. You know, if the U.S. ambassador to the court of St. James, Woody Johnson, had said something like that about the queen or Theresa May, he'd be gone. So... I, you know, why the president said that, I don't know. I, I don't think it diminishes our relationship with, with the U.K. at all. In fact, if they leave the EU, I think they become a bigger ally, if that's so possible. I want, to, uh, I want to thank Tom Keogh, King's Strategies, for joining us today. Great insights. Uh, Rich Valdez and Wal Walker Bragman up next for a left-right mix-it-up. You're watching Liquid Lunch back after this. Thank you, guys.